Robert, thank you so much to be with us today. Thank you for inviting me. You know, you have so many title, you know, under your belt. So I came like, you know, I just like, you know, how should I introduce you? So I'm going to have you give the privilege to introduce yourself then. <laughs> well, well, I'm a Berkshire Hathaway shareholder. Okay. And I'm an author of three books, all three related books. to Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett. And I've lectured in 17 countries. 17 countries. Yeah, five continents. I'm still uh, missing South America. <laughs> but I'm hoping to get South America this summer. Okay. And um, I've spoken at uh, 15 universities, maybe, uh, actually 17, 18 universities now. Uh, and I, my favorite it was, has been creating a course on Warren Buffett, a comprehensive course, which I teach at the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Exactly. And it's a um, three-day, 24-hour course. Three-day, 24-hour course, okay. And in the fall, it's a 36-hour course. And we have attendees coming uh, from around the world, all six continents. To, yeah, to just attend the course. Yes. And That's amazing. 14 countries this spring and all six continents. Wow. So where did the idea of teaching that class came from? Well, it, it came actually from the dean of the business school here. Okay. Who um, approached me and uh, suggested to me that I take the lectures that I've been doing around the world and put those Formal into a courses, course yeah. and to offer it in conjunction with the executive MBA program and we did that uh, six years ago uh, so we're now in our sixth year actually. okay so the course is the genius of Warren Buffett so because you're a genius that's why you're teaching that class classes or because Warren Buffett is a genius not who, because who, I'm a genius. Who, <laughs> who's the genius no, here? No. Uh, it's not the genius of Bob Miles. <laughs> it's the genius of Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, okay. Oh, thanks. Uh, you'd, you'd be about the only person to suggest that. No, I think, you know, that's extraordinary that you teach those, those, those classes. So tell me about what are the things in those courses, like, you know, what are the subject that you teach in those classes? Well, I've organized it uh, initially representing each hour of the clock in Warren Buffett's life from uh, growing up, being born in Omaha, growing exactly. up in Omaha, Omaha, his biography, to early influences, to his character and communication traits, because you really can't talk about Warren, or teach a course about Warren, without first and foremost talking about character. Exactly. The importance of character. And character doesn't have anything to do with your, uh, where you were born, or who you were born, or who your parents or grandparents are, how much money you have, uh, it's all it comes down to a personal choice of character traits. I totally, I totally agree with that. I totally can, agree with uh, that. You can choose them uh, and discard uh, character traits that you don't admire in others. Yeah. And then we talk about the investment principles, of course. Uh, very, his portfolio very important. Construction. Okay. Yeah. We talk about uh, his management and style. Several of his managers come in and our guest speakers. We have as uh, as many as six guest speakers come in. So I just I those like the, the CEOs of different companies, yes. you know. So, okay. Uh, we have somebody uh, coming in from the insurance companies, uh, from the media company, from the furniture companies, a uh, variety of okay. uh, companies that are wholly owned subsidiaries of Berkshire Hathaway. Okay. And then we, we get into the governance of the course, uh, and, uh, you know, how the board of governors works, board of directors work. Then we get into the mistakes. And when I showed Warren the syllabus, I <laughs> uh, shared it with him, he said, well, the whole course could be about his mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> that it needed to be longer than just one module. And then, most importantly, we we get into the give back in the philanthropy aspect. aspect. Exactly. And then, uh, and his daughter comes in. Su Susan? Susie, Susan. Okay, Susan. And talks about uh, philanthropy and uh, growing up you know, in the Buffett household. And, and then the last uh, segment is to present a stock or business you think Warren Buffett would buy or would fit into the Berkshire criteria portfolio. and why. To answer your follow-up question, uh, there are over 80 subsidiaries of Berkshire Hathaway, but many of those subsidiaries have many subsidiaries underneath them. <laughs> so it's the largest conglomerate in the United States, the fourth largest corporation in the United fourth States, largest. You know, based on um, market capitalization. And that, with 360,000 employees, mm -hmm. but only 25 at headquarters 
here in Omaha at Hewitt Plaza. It just blew your mind. Yes. <laughs> it so blows it's a your very mind. Uh, decentralized yeah. uh, system yeah. that is unparalleled and uh, unprecedented throughout corporate mm -hmm. history. Yeah. So many would do that. Awesome. So there are so many books about Warren Buffett out there, but I understand that you are one of the few that have access to Oracle of Omaha. How do you manage to gain his trust? Well, I wouldn't say that I have access to uh, Warren Buffett uh, any more than uh, other authors. Okay. Um, I would say that he really liked my first book, which was started out as a blog on The Motley Fool, 101 Reasons to Own Berkshire Hathaway. That turned into a book and turned into many foreign translations and uh, it has been distributed around the world with well over 100,000 copies. So That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. The second book, The Warren Buffett CEO, I went out and I interviewed CEOs who uh, had sold their businesses to Warren or report directly to him and interviewed them in their offices and put together the Warren Buffett CEO, wow. revealing some of the secrets uh, behind the managers of Berkshire Hathaway. Warren really liked, he liked the first book, he bought copies for his board of directors. The second no book, kidding. <laughs> yes, the second book he really liked. Because so he, he really liked the second one better than the first one? Well, or which one did like the best? They're, Marco, they're, your books are like children. You don't say which one are your favorite. You, know, you love them all. But uh, the first one he, re he gave to his board of directors. The second one he mentioned in his annual report. And that's better than Oprah recommending a book. I agree. And the third one is uh, Warren Buffett Wealth, the principles and practical methods used by the world's greatest investor. I'm hoping that one he'll mention me in his will. <laughs> Meant for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. So as a shareholder myself, so do you think one day Warren Buffett will say, okay, we need to pay some dividend yeah. to those shareholders who have been so patient? Not likely, Marco, and congratulations for being a shareholder. Thank you. Um, dividends are a very inefficient way of getting money back to you. Correct. That the corporation has earnings um, and they pay taxes on those earnings and then they distribute a dividend to you and then you as an individual, at least in the United States, would have to pay tax on that. So it's taxed at the corporate level and at the individual level. I agree. A more, far more efficient way, which he's done, is to buy back shares. So your shares become more valuable because there are less shares available. So anytime the price is below 120% of book value, then he is authorized uh, to buy back shares. So if book value, let's say on the B shares, is $100, just to use a ballpark, anytime the share price would drop below $120, 120% 120 of book value, he would buy those back. What you need to buy. And so the remaining shares that you still own would uh, be a more efficient way of transferring uh, money to you. You okay. would have to pay tax on that gain. Yeah. What Warren recommends for those people who need money to live on <laughs> is simply, money to live on. <laughs> simply to sh sell shares as you need them. So okay. if you want a 2% or a 3% or a 4% dividend, then sell so each year, year yeah. 2 or 3 or 4% of your stock and that would be your dividend. Okay. And that would be a far more efficient way because your tax on the capital gains, at least in the United States, is far less than a tax on dividends. It kind of makes sense to me now, that just because I'm, I was been anxious for like years, like, you know, because in my mind, I think when you pay a dividend, shareholders are more attracted to that particular stock. So yes. uh, it kind of makes sense to me. So what well, one of your favorite quotes from Warren Buffett? Price is what you pay, value is what you get. Okay. That's one, but another one would have to be, I never do anything in business, or life for that matter, okay. that you wouldn't want reported on the front page of your local newspaper, written by a intelligent but critical reporter. I think that's uh, a good way to live your life. I totally agree, that's very powerful. 
So now let's focus on Mr. Robert Mars for a few for, for few cash questions. So what advice do you have for like you know, let's say a young college student just get up from college, they wanna start investing, what can they do? What are the path they can follow? Well, I'm a big believer in internships and I think the best thing a college student can do is to uh, pursue an internship in any area or endeavor that they have a passion for. Definitely. And to do the internship, paid or unpaid, it's, I think if, if you do it unpaid, that's great because your compensation is simply your experience and knowledge that you gain. It becomes your tuition uh, and all the contacts that you make. Exactly. And maybe at the end of a eight week, ten week internship, you don't like that. Well, that that taught you something. And then the, the next uh, summer, or whenever you are able to do an internship, you pursue something else. So internships, I think, are the pathway to discovering your passion. The second thing is Warren, as well as his good friend and board member Bill Gates, read. They read uh, voraciously, and Warren reads as much as six hours a day. So college students would uh, do well by reading and immersing themselves into, if it's investment management, Go to BerkshireHathaway.com for free. Yeah, you can read stuff. Download his yeah. annual reports and his letters to shareholders. Yeah. They're chronicled by year. Yeah. Start with uh, the most recent year, and it's 25 pages um, to read. And there's the world's greatest investor as well as the world's greatest manager, yeah. um, a genius by many accounts, teaching you. And then I would say the third thing is to choose the right mentors. Choose the right mentor. Your mentor doesn't have to agree to mentor you. Your mentor doesn't even have to be alive. Whoever your mentor is, somebody that you really admire, I admire. learn from that mentor through his or her writing, his or her actions, his or her speeches, and let that inspire you to uh, be the kind of person that you want to become. One question that I forget, you know, in this age of technology, I'm very surprised that Warren Buffett doesn't have a computer in his office. Because I remember that you mentioned that two years ago. Right. Is that still the case? That's still the case. He doesn't have a, a calculator or a computer in his office. He does have one at home, but he has one at home uh, simply to play bridge. Uh, he jokingly says he wouldn't mind going to prison as long as you can guarantee him three other cellmates who knew how to play bridge relatively well. <laughs> but he thinks young people are making a mistake by not taking up the game. Yeah. Because it's a game of probability, it's, it's like business, it's a game dependent on who your partner is. Exactly. A good partner in bridge, a good partner in business, a good partner in life. So if you're not teaching, if you're not speaking, traveling, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me um, in uh, Florida, uh, either running along the water uh, as I ran my very first marathon okay. this past year okay. uh, on the tennis court, uh, reading uh, quietly at home or writing. Uh, and I try to go to five new countries a year. So a year? A year. Wow. I'm up to 78 countries. That's amazing. Uh, but it's only a Marco about a third of the, uh, of the world. I bet, I bet. If you had to be one animal, who would that be? What, what would that be? Uh, an animal that's not likely to be some other wild animal's lunch. Uh, so I'm guessing an elephant. Elephant? They have, they're big in stature, they're, they have a good memory, it's a matriarchal family structure, okay. mom's in charge, um, and they're not likely to get um, eaten by some other wild animal. So. What would be your last advice to my viewers? You should do what you would do if you were already rich. Okay. Waiting wow. to do something until you're rich, he says, is like saving up sex for old age. <laughs> That's so funny. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> well, Robert, thank you so much for having me on the show. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to comment below 
and subscribe to our show somewhere here so you don't miss any content.